Okay, so where are we in Nagel's argument? What is, the, more precisely, what is the problem that Nagel is faced with in insisting that death is a bad thing in the sense of being a deprivation of goods uh, for the person who's died? Well, um, let's, uh, and he, he encourages us to think about, in general, uh, the conditions under which, as I said before, we say that something bad has happened to someone. And the problem he's faced with is that even if he has characterized death as an evil or a bad or a misfortune for the person who dies because it deprives us of good, not because the state of being dead is inherently bad, but rather because it, it, it is a deprivation or loss of goods, we still are faced with the problem of whether or not one can say that a deprivation that happens to a dead person is a bad thing. Uh, I don't think he puts that quite in those terms. I think that that's what he's dealing with. If a dead person is deprived of something, can we really say that anyone has been deprived of something? And the way that Nagel approaches this problem, overcoming this problem or overcoming this possible objection, I think is uh, stated on, general approach is stated on page 76. In the second paragraph, he says, it should be recognized that if these are valid objections to counting death as an evil, they will apply to many other supposed evils as well. The first type of objection is expressed in general form by the common remark that what you don't know can't hurt you. So what, what is Nagel imagining there? That um, someone may object to the notion that death is a bad thing, even if it's cast in the form of a, a, a bad thing because it deprives us of good things. Uh, because uh, the subject of the deprivation never experiences any negative experiences any negative feelings, any negative states as a result of the deprivation. Now, we can be deprived of food, you and I. That is, someone can take away the good thing uh, that we value called food and nutrition. And we are therefore deprived. Um, and we can say that a bad thing has happened to us because we've been deprived of food. But w why is the deprivation bad? One may argue that it's, it, it's bad because it is... Uh, painful to be hungry. It's painful to be starving. That is, that we experience directly, in a direct state of our being, our body and our mind, pain and suffering because of the deprivation. Of course, that doesn't apply to death, because if death is a deprivation of goods, there's no one around to suffer the consequences of that deprivation. So what he's got to argue is that Generally speaking, death is one of those bad things where we are, uh, a, a bad thing happens to us, a misfortune happens to us. We don't know that the misfortune has happened to us, and we never experience any kind of painful state as a result of that misfortune. Yet, we still say that something bad and misfortune has uh, happened to us. And his way of arguing is to say that there are many, besides death, there are many such uh, bad things or misfortune or evils that can befall someone and that person never actually experiences any negative state, any state of pain, suffering, or any other sort of uh, negative uh, state because of the, uh, the bad thing happen to them, happening to them. In fact, they never become aware that the bad thing has happened to him. Um, and let's say... Uh, his example on page 77 of the person who has experienced a brain injury. He says, these ideas can be illustrated by an example of deprivation whose severity approaches that of death. Suppose an intelligent person receives a brain injury that reduces him to the mental condition of a contented infant. Now imagine such a person who does experience such a tragedy, where because of some injury they are instantly uh, reduced to the mental state of an infant, but a happy infant. Okay, so you have a normal, normally functioning, thriving adult who is reduced to the state of an infant, of a happy infant, but, but an infant. Now that person would never experience any direct state, uh, an awareness of their deprivation, and therefore would never experience any sort of suffering in this hypothesis. At the same time, 
Nagel is arguing, we would definitely say that something bad has happened to them, even if they're not aware of it. Even if the person themselves never becomes aware of the misfortune, we would still say that a misfortune has happened to them. Uh, and we can think of other types of examples where we something we would say that something bad has happened to somebody even if they never consciously experience any suffering as a result of that bad thing happening to them. Uh, one example that I, I, I thought of or talking about this essay with various people over the years is you know, what if you bought a lottery ticket and it turned out to be a winning lottery ticket, you put it in your back pocket and you completely forgot that you bought it. Some, you know, something happens and you completely no memory of buying it whatsoever. <coughs> the lottery ticket goes through the wash, it's ruined, you never cash it in, but you have no awareness that you bought the ticket, you have absolutely no awareness that you uh, had a winning ticket that you didn't cash in, and, and you never experienced any direct mental state of anxiety, suffering, regret, etc. because of that lost lottery ticket. Would we say about someone to whom this had happened, that something bad had happened to them, that they had suffered a misfortune. A uh, similar uh, hypothetical, I don't know exactly, maybe we can, we can talk about this uh, in the, the Wimbus section, but it, it's not, some might say yes, some might say no. Certainly Nagel, I think, would be inclined to say yes, something bad has happened to that person, that even though they're not aware of it, even though directly they don't experience any suffering because of it, they have been deprived of someone, and just our perhaps common instincts about these things, or our common sort of urge or disposition in this case, would be to say about such a person who had lost that lottery ticket but didn't know it, uh, that something bad had happened to them. And certainly the person who's been reduced mentally to the state of an infant, no matter how content they may be as someone with the, the mentality of an infant, uh, we would certainly say that it's a terrible thing. It happened to them, even if they, they weren't aware of it. So his first strategy, I think, to overcome the notion that, uh, the Epicurean notion that death is not a bad thing because we do not experience it directly, is to say that there's all sorts of bad things that can happen to us. Betrayal, deceit, things happening behind our back, uh, deprivations of all, sort, of all sorts that we may not be aware of directly. But one would say, looking from the outside at least, that such a person who would experience such a thing uh, would certainly have experienced something bad.